We wanted to bring you this about Gwen Torrance. Since the last Olympics, Gwen has become America's top female sprinter. Many may not know that, but with the Olympics just ahead, it would seem that her days of relative anonymity are over. Georgia. They've been celebrating a lot lately in Atlanta, Georgia. The city has been named host of the 1996 Olympics, of course. And last September, the long, woeful Braves won the pennant. These days, you might say Atlanta, Georgia is on everyone's mind. And soon, there may be another cause for celebration. Fifteen minutes east of downtown Atlanta, suburban Decatur is the home of a wife and mother who's likely to be the next Olympic sprint champion. In 1987, Gwen Torrance emerged as one of America's rising young sprint stars. She was marked as a contender at the 1988 Olympics. But the Seoul Games belonged to Florence Griffith Joyner. Flo Jo won three golds and a silver, and that feat prompted Torrance to lift her sights. I think if Florence did it, anybody else can do it. And I've trained very hard to where I can do it all. And my plans for New Orleans is to be in the top three. I would like to win the trials, but if I don't, I won't be devastated or anything. My main goal is to be one of those top three spots. But at last year's World Championships, Torrance was overshadowed again by another Wonder Woman, Katrine Kraba of Germany. Behind Kraba, Torrance managed two sprint silvers. But Kraba and two of her teammates have since been suspended from manipulating drug tests. With Kraba not expected in Barcelona, Torrance's remaining rival becomes Jamaica's Merlene Adi. It bothers me in the sense that I don't have the medals, but in my heart I feel like I have it because I did beat her after World Championships. Um, I think the pressure is still on Merlene Adi. She's number one and she has the fastest times and after World Championships she beat me again and she demolished me in the 200. Manley Waller was a sprinter at the University of Georgia when he met his future wife. Waller isn't running anymore, but he's still in the sport dedicated to pushing Gwen Torrance to the limits of her ability. If I didn't have my husband, I wouldn't have anything because nobody's going to go out there on that track with me. Um, nobody's going to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning in the fall with me and go for a run and lift weights. And uh, we often talk about it and I say, I don't know what, what would I do if I didn't have you. Whatever I can do that can make Gwen better. I would try to do it. She'll be working out, she'll be tired, and she'll, she'll look over there at me. Oh, you okay, babe? I said, well, don't worry about me. You know, if I get hurt today, you know, I, I, can, I can crawl in to work. But if you get hurt, you know, your season might be over with. The other manly in Gwen's life is her two-year-old son, and the day of his birth is not yet forgotten. You have not experienced pain until you have that baby. You do things that you never thought you would do when you're in labor, and you, you say things you never thought you would say. So um, I definitely have experienced pain with a capital P. Man, tell them how your mama run. Fast. Tell them how fast. Too fast. That's right. <laughs> the child is just not cute enough. We'll have Torrance in the women's 100-meter final after this. There she is. We move now to the finals in the women's 100-meter dash. Flojo, the world and American record holder, here is a race that could be better than the 100-meter final in Barcelona. A stellar field in lane one, Sheila Eccles. Lane two, Marion Jones, the 16-year-old high schooler. In lane three, Esther Jones, second in a second semifinal. And she's been running real well from the LSU. I think she doesn't feel that she can win this race. Maybe she does, but I look for her to make a strong showing for third. And of course, uh, whoever finishes fourth and fifth have a chance to run on the relay team. Lane four, Carlette Guidry White, 1991 champion, looked good in winning a semifinal. Lane five, Michelle Finn. She was third in her semifinal. Number six, Gwen Torrance, silver medalist at the World Championships, winner of the first semifinal here. Her husband watching as she tries to qualify for Barcelona. Her husband, Manley, who trains with her in Georgia. They get up at five in the morning to train. Gail Devers trying to be the first American woman to represent the U.S. in both 
the 100 meter hurdles and open 100 dash. And in lane eight, Evelyn Ashford at 35 years old bidding for her fourth U.S. Olympic team. Normally you get a lot of gamesmanship among the men. I think the women have been doing more this week than the men. Every one of the major women in this race, uh, uh, except Gittry, have been complaining about some type of injury. I think we may have two different races here. I think for first place, I'm looking at uh, Charlotte Gittry White and Gwen Torrance, and then I think it's going to be a battle between uh, Ashford Devers and Esther Jones for that third place spot. Of course, Devers has been taking it very easy in, the, uh, in, the, in, in most of the trial races. She's gotten out first, and she's just floated through most of the race. Top three to Barcelona, a world-class sprinter will be left home. And a false start. They'll call the runners back to the box. That was interesting because I didn't see who jumped. I, I felt there was an exceptionally long pause there between this set. And it is charged to Sheila Eccles in lane one. Sheila Eccles, graduate of LSU and the champion in the U.S. in 1988. Right of your screen, lane one, Sheila Eccles with a false start. Well, we can't hit a gun, but uh, that's about as close as it can, as it can get. So the runners will re-enter the blocks. Gwen Torrance, Catherine Kraba, beater at the World Championships. The status of Kraba for Barcelona still in doubt after a positive drug test. She has been reinstated. The IAAF has not heard her case yet. At this point, Kraba is still eligible. Gwen Torrance determined to challenge for the gold medal in Barcelona. And Kraba wasn't overly impressive in the German games. That's why I think Gwen has a good shot at getting at Mary, I mean, at, at Adi, Arlene Adi. Gidry White, Gwen Torrance, Michelle Finn, it is Gidry White, and here comes Devers, and then Torrance, Torrance, Devers run one, two. Gwen Torrance closing in the final meters to catch Gail Devers at the line. Her husband, Manley, celebrates the victory by Gwen Torrance. Those 5 a.m. training sessions in Georgia, husband and wife have paid off. And that told us she gets inspiration from her two and a half year old son, Manley. It'll be Gwen Torrance that leads the U.S. contingent to Barcelona. And Gwen had said all along, that Evelyn Ashford, she was right around fourth or fifth. I didn't quite uh, get what she finished. But Gwen Torrance has been working on strength. She's been running 200s and 400s. She said strength would be the most important thing here. She got out real well. Of course, Devers, as expected, got out first. But as you can see here at about 70 meters, it was that endurance work, that strength work that paid off of Gwen Torrance. Of course, Garlett Gittry is there. And Evelyn Ashford. Evelyn Ashford might have gotten the uh, third spot. It's pretty difficult to tell from the angle that we have here, but Evelyn was right there with Carlett Gittry White for the third spot. Here's Gwen Torrance again. Closing in the final meters. And speaking of closing, it was Evelyn Ashford with a big closing kick to get the third spot as Carlett Gittry White takes fourth. So unofficially, that's the way they finished. Now that's amazing. 35 years of age, a mother. 35 years old. And Gidry White finishing fourth might as well be last. She wouldn't go to Barcelona except perhaps as a member of the relay team. The top six will be named to the uh, relay team, the 4 by 100 for Barcelona. Let's go to Todd Christensen down on the track. We're here with Gwen Torrance. You know, Gwen, you know, people were talking about the fact that your knee was bothering you a little bit. I saw you raise your heel up after one of the heats. You had some physical problems, but obviously you overcame all of them. Um, I was very, very sore. But I said, no pain, no Spain. I worked too hard to not try to get in. So, um, I just tried to neglect the pain and do what I had to do. 
What happened? <laughs> Congratulations to you, Gwen. We got something else going here. Little celebration. Well, here are the unofficial results then in the women's 100 final. Remember, the top three will go to Barcelona. The top six will go as members of the relay team. Unofficially now, Torrance, Devers, and Ashford, the top three. So Gwen Torrance, true to her word, sending a challenge to the rest of the world. See you in Barcelona. We'll be back.